In this video, we at iDoc Europe show you how to replace the display on your iPhone 11 yourself. The repair is a bit more difficult because the display is glued on and you have to take care of the somewhat fragile flex cables. You should plan at least 30 to 60 minutes, if you're not yet familiar with iPhone repairs, you'd better plan a little more time for it. For the repair we recommend the following tools. Tools and spare parts are available from iDoc at www.idoc.eu. All links can be found in the video description. And now have fun with the repair. First turn off your iPhone to avoid short circuits. Press and hold the standby button and one of the volume buttons, and then confirm to switch off the phone. To remove the display, first remove the two pentalobe screws to the left and right of the lightning connector. Apple uses special pentalobe screws here. The links to all necessary tools can be found in the video description. The display is strongly glued. So you should heat the glue to remove the display. Use a heat gun or a hairdryer. To remove the display you will also need a suction cup and a hard plastic plectrum. An iFlex is also handy for getting into the narrow gap between the display and the frame. Note, however, that the iPhone is no longer waterproof after a repair. Heat the edges of the display to about 60 degrees Celsius. Take care not to overheat the device. As a rule of thumb, always heat the device only so far that you can still touch the heated area with your hand. Heating softens the glue a little bit and lets you remove the display. Now grab your suction cup and stick it to the bottom of the display. Next pull on the suction cup and insert a plectrum into the space between display and frame. If you have been able to push the plectrum in a little bit, move the plectrum once around the frame and lever the display slightly upwards. If you can't get a plectrum into the gap between the display and the frame, you can use a thinner tool like the iFlex. But be careful not to scratch the frame nor go too far into the device with the tool. Also, when working with the plectrum, be careful not to insert it too far into the device. Be especially careful on the right side, where the display connection cables are located. Heat the edge repeatedly and gradually loosen the display adhesive. Once the glue is loosened all around, you can fold open the display. Don't unfold the display too much, or the cables might get strained and suffer damage. Put a stable object next to the iPhone to support the display and make your device doesn't slip away. You can also take a tool like the iHold Evo for support. The iHold consists of a flexible cable with a clamp and is plugged into the lightning connector. Then you can fix the display with the clamp and so the display can no longer slip away. The display unit is connected with a total of three connectors. First of all remove the cover plate above the connectors. Loosen the screws of the same lengths, remove the plate and then carefully separate the connectors with a spudger. Hold the display firmly and take care not to overstretch the thin flex cables. Be careful not to loose the screws or mix them with others later on. The easiest way to do this is with an iDoc magnet pad, on which you can arrange the screws and the cover plate as they are placed in the device. Take your time and pay special attention when loosening the connectors. Be careful not to damage any parts of the logic board. Now everything is disconnected and you can continue with the display unit. Next, remove the earpiece to transfer it to the new display later on. Loosen the Y-type and Phillips screws on the earpiece. Again, be careful not to mix up the screws of different lengths. Carefully fold the earpiece to the side. It is connected to the other sensors with two thin flex cables. Before you can release the sensors, you must first remove the small metal bracket above the ambient light sensor. The flex cable is slightly glued in place. Use a hot air gun or an ordinary hairdryer to soften the glue. Slide a flat tool such as a spatula or tweezers under the flex cable very carefully. Be particularly careful with this cable, as it can cause problems with Face ID if it is damaged. Then pry the various sensors out of their holders. Be very careful and take enough time to avoid damaging the fragile flex cable. Once all parts are off, you can take out the flex cable. The entire back of the display is covered by a metal plate, which must be transferred to the new display. 
The flex cables and the display controller are glued to the rear panel. In addition, the plate is hooked into the lower side. Use hot air to loosen the adhesive and first separate the two flex cables from each other. Then slide a steel spatula carefully under the display controller and gradually loosen the entire cable. The back plate is fixed on all sides with short Y-type screws. Some of the screws are very tight and cannot be loosened easily. Therefore it is very important to use a high-quality Y-type screwdriver. Here you can see a badly fitting bit from an iFixit bit set in comparison. When all cables are loose you can lift the plate up and slide under it again with a tool to loosen all glue. If the adhesive is difficult to remove, use more hot air. Then unhook the plate at the bottom and lead the flex cable through the opening. Not all available displays are the same, so compare your new display with the old one. You might have to remove some slightly glued parts from the old display, such as the plastic holder for the front camera or sensors. With our replacement display from iDoc, everything is there and you can start right away with the reassembly. If there's a protective film on your replacement display, pull it off now. Here in the video we did not use a new spare part, because our display was still fine. The process with a new display is however the same. First, reattach the back panel. Guide the flex cable through the opening and then place the plate on the lower edge at an angle. Make sure you don't pinch the second cable under the plate. Then hook the plate into the bottom of the display and put it down. Check that it fits correctly everywhere. Then glue the flex cable with the display controller to the rear panel. Finally screw all Y-type screws in at the edge of the rear panel. Put the flex cable in place and guide the sensors into their openings on the display. Make sure that the plastic sensor holders are installed in the display. They might come with your new display, or you have to take them out of the old one. Press in the sensors to make them sit. Also attach the small metal holder above the ambient light sensor. Flip the earpiece over so that the screw holes are exactly on top of each other. Screw the earpiece into place with the different screws. Don't mix up the screws and don't tighten them too much, otherwise they can shine through at the front of the display. To protect the iPhone against dust and splash water it is recommended to use a new adhesive frame. In this video, you can see the iPhone 8, but the procedure is the same for the iPhone 11. First remove all glue residue, so the new glue will hold. But do remember that the iPhone will no longer be 100% waterproof. Before attaching the frame sticker make sure it's aligned right. The corners and the holes for the camera show you which way is up or down. Now remove the first backing film. First put the frame smoothly on one side of the device and press it on slightly. Then press on the sticker all around. Make sure that the sticker stays inside of the frame all around. Grab a spudger to make the frame sticker hold properly. Now you can remove the second big carrier film. You can remove the last small part of film now or after connecting and testing the display. Leaving the film on prevents the display from sticking too early. Place the display unit on the edge of the frame and lean it to a stable object, so the fragile flex cables don't get stretched too far. Make sure your device doesn't slip away. Connect the three display connectors. Make sure you place them right before you press them on. Don't slide them around over their logic board sockets or the contacts might get damaged. Now you can reattach the cover plate and secure it with the screws. You can now do a quick test to make sure the parts in your new display, such as the earpiece and proximity sensor, are working right. Carefully fold down the display, but don't press it onto the frame yet. Now press and hold the standby button to start your device. You can check if the touchscreen responds everywhere by taking any app and dragging it all along the edges of the display. Go to the control center to test the brightness of your device.
You can test the earpiece by calling someone. You can also check if the proximity sensor works. If everything works fine you can go on and close the device. If the touch screen or the earpiece isn't working right, it could be because the connectors aren't sitting right or the flex cables are damaged. Now carefully fold and close the display. Make sure the display is sitting right before you press it on. Gradually press down the display so it's sitting on the frame right. Now you can fasten the pentalobe screws at the lower end of the iPhone. Your iPhone is fixed now and we hope it was fun for you. If you liked the video, why don't you leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. High quality tools, spare parts and accessories are available in our store. See you next time.